Okay, I will call to order the Haywood County Board of Commissioners meeting for March 5th, 2018 and ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. You'll come forward and give our invocation this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll try. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, we bless you this day and we thank you. As we have the privilege of living in this beautiful place, from the Great Smokies to the Plot Balsams and the Mighty Blue Ridge, we thank you for these hills under which we lift up our eyes and we remember that our help comes from you. And we ask you, O oh Lord, to bless that these commissioners as they meet today may have wisdom and discernment from you to govern us well and wisely. But Lord, bless the good citizens of this county to be easily governed. We pray that we may participate positively in government and in a way, Lord, that works for the good of all those who live here. And today, we thank you for these first responders who are here along with our law enforcement personnel who go about their day willing to put themselves at risk in order to keep us safe. Please bless them and keep them as they undertake their responsibilities, for we surely are grateful. And we pray all of this with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Amen. All right, next we have a public comment session uh, each week. Folks are invited to give uh, public comment. We like to limit the comments up to approximately three minutes. Uh, we've got one person signed up here, but anyone else that wants to come up during this time, feel free to do so. Uh, M. Miller has been has signed up. Uh, Chairman Kirkpatrick and Commissioner Sorrells, um, I'm reiterating the request for public records I made at the last meeting. Nothing has been forthcoming, so I am here again to appeal to you two as you're both running for office. Uh, please instruct the actual custodians of public records to respond directly to my repeated requests, some dating back to early January. Uh, David Francis, Chris Boyd, Julie Davis, and Chip Killian are all county employees and direct custodians of county records I am requesting. I can appreciate David Francis, Chris Boyd, and Julie Davis not responding, so I will alternatively seek the information from Donna Corpening, Kathy McClure, and Candy Way. I am again asking publicly at this county commission meeting for the following. Request number 29. Please provide documentation that Haywood County ordered and authorized the removal of topsoil from the David Francis dirt spreading project at the work site. Additionally, any public record which shows a payment to Steve Miller, our AVCON, for the removal of topsoil uh, from that work site. Request number 27. Request for public uh, records relating to the MOU signed by Sarah McCoy on December 13th in as follows. I want to see the cover pages of the MOU. Uh, since the MOU is an agreement between two people or entities, I want to see the signature page for whoever signed for this county. Uh, the MOU references at the end some enclosures, uh, revised drawing in detail, and sheet R1 and R2 dated December 13, 2017. Request number 20. I want to inspect or receive a copy of the documents previously requested, requested, but now by the custodians of that information and the name, company, and co contact information set forth in Christy Brown's email sent on December 8, 2017, and more specifically, who is at the other end of those emails. Uh, request number 25, I would like to inspect the actual drawings that Steve Miller used to place the entrance and the 2,000 feet of silt fence at the site. I appreciate your allowing time for me to express my concerns. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else? Okay. If not, we'll close the public comment session, move to constituent concerns. Brandon? 
Debbie? No, I don't have any this week. Bill? Thank you to our commissioners for attending our commission for a clean county. And uh, we, at this time of year, we're getting a lot of requests in, email, that the, a lot of litter on the highways. Uh, and it, that's true. I, I was thinking about myself that the month of January was cold, you couldn't get out. In the month of February, it's rained all the time. So, but uh, we're going to get some of those areas. I think Kendra Medford, uh, Kevin, uh, emailed us about an area. Our, our commission has talked about it. And, Sheriff, we might need you to pick that area up. It's not very safe for a 73 year old guy out there dodging traffic. So, and uh, we're going to pick up the county. will look better. Uh, Interstate 40 was being picked up today. So, Give us some time and the county will look better. If we can keep the windows rolled up in vehicles, we can make it. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Kevin? Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate my, th my thanks for the Commission for a Clean County and all they do um, for, the, for the county. Just to uh, ask again, and I think we covered this uh, the last meeting, but these particular items that's been requested for in our public session, they have been given. Is that correct? That's, that's my opinion, but I, t I will tell you that I have contacted all of the individuals that would have these records, and uh, we are planning to tomorrow uh, to uh, spend some time going through these requests again, going through what we've submitted. If we've missed anything, Mr. Miller, Miller will receive, if it is indeed a public record, he will receive that. If it's, you know, so I do have his list now. Uh, I've already set up a time or uh, indicated that uh, with those that would have these records in their custody to uh, make those available tomorrow so that we can review what we've sent him and what we, uh, if we still owe him any public records, he will receive those. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next we'll move to administrative agency reports. We've got uh, introduction of new county employees. Mr. Mashburn. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, this is uh, something new here, but uh, there are other departments that have been doing this. So I, uh, I wanted to uh, begin this process here. Uh, and what we have are uh, new employees that came in the month of January and February. Normally we will be doing this just one time uh, every month, but we didn't get it done in January. So we have employees that are, uh, have started working with the county and I'm gonna call out their department and their name and position. And if they will stand when I call their name and remain standing until the end. So we'll start with Development and Facility Services, Timothy, Timothy Surrett, Planning and Development Specialist, Angela Mathis, Custodian, and Health and Human Services, Andrea Carter, Income Maintenance Caseworker, Lori Green, Paralegal, Slade Smathers, Environmental Health Specialist, Heather Brooks, social worker. Rebecca Lackey, income maintenance caseworker. And then in technology and communications, Scott Lamp, computer support technician. In emergency services, we've got Courtney Lant, paramedic. Madison Brown, paramedic. Logan Walker, paramedic. Corey Holland, paramedic, Jonathan Godfrey, paramedic, and Anthony DeCoral, paramedic. Mr. Chairman and members, these are the newest employees that we have coming to work for Haywood County. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mashburn. And uh, on behalf of the board, we would like to welcome all of you uh, to Haywood County and, and to the employment of Haywood County, and we appreciate all that you do. Uh, I, I think we're trying to push for uh, a, a little more, um, at least familiarity between the county employees and, and what's going on in their daily lives. And I think we started something else uh, as well as, a, as an email or a newsletter out to the county employees as well. 
So thank you for becoming part of Haywood County, and we look forward to working with you. Most of them have jobs to go to, so they, yeah, you, they're not required to, to stay for the whole meeting. That's right. Feel free to go ahead and go if you need to. All right. Uh, next, we've got uh, Child Fatality Prevention Team Report, Lisa Davis, Director of Nursing, Health and Human Services uh, with the Health and Human Services Agency. Uh, good, good morning, morning, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Um, I would like to present the annual Child Fatality Prevention Team Report for our county. Um, CFPTs are mandated by North Carolina General Statute, and ours was established in 1995. And we review the deaths of children, Haywood County residents, from birth through the age of 17 to try to understand the causes of childhood deaths and to um, make recommendations locally and to the state um, in terms of changes to policies or laws or activities that we can do to try to um, promote the, safe, uh, the safety and, and healthy development of children. And the review process does take about a year to get all of the information. We do meet four times a year. And in 2015, there were eight deaths. Um, in 2016, we had 10 deaths. Actually, that's the most since I have been um, the chair since 2005. The causes of those were one child died of blunt force injuries related to a homicide. One was from a congenital birth defect. One was a medical, condi medical condition at birth. Four were undetermined. One was caused by a genetic condition. And two were due to extreme prematurity at birth. And just as a note, that undetermined, when it's listed as a cause of death, is after an autopsy is completed and there is no anatomic illness, toxicology, or injury identified that may have caused the death. Um, in 2017, we only had one death. Um, and so far in 2018, we have not had any. Our actions and recommendations are made back to the state child fatality prevention team. And some of the findings that we found were a lack of adequate prenatal care and maternal substance abuse during pregnancy was identified as a possible contributing factor in an infant death. Unsafe sleeping conditions or environments that include co-sleeping or bed sharing with infants as well as infant sleep spaces that have blankets, wedges, pillows, or other items have possibly contributed to some of the infant deaths. In general, our team's findings and recommendations have addressed and supported initiatives that promote early and consistent prenatal care. Those programs that address maternal sub substance abuse during pregnancy, existing agencies, programs, and initiatives for the prevention of childhood trauma mm. and promotion of childhood safety, Safe sleep initiatives, activities, and recommendations for the prevention of sudden unexplained infant death and sudden infant death syndrome. The provision of safe sleep information and education to parents and caregivers of infants. And we do have the provision of pack and plays for eligible parents and caregivers who do not have a safe place for their babies to sleep. And uh, more recently, we have sponsored, our agency has sponsored a billboard about safe sleep in our county. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions, Commissioners? No question. I just think it's important to note, uh, if you don't mind, I know this because I am on the board, but those four deaths that were undetermined in 2016, three of those, uh, they get extensive. Uh, 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 they, they, I guess what I'm trying to say is they review those three uh, further, don't they? Do you mind to speak to that? If there, if there are... Um, circumstances in which a child dies and there has been a um, report of abuse or neglect to the Department of Social Services um, within the past 12 months or the child the child's family was a recipient of um, child protective services within the previous 12 months then those children's deaths do receive intensive child death reviews 
from the state, state level. So we have a, a state DSS person who comes in and facilitates that meeting with our community child protection team, which is a little different, but we are in collaboration with each other. And so um, ultimately those reports are public record when they are finalized. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you, Lisa. We Thank appreciate you. that report. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next, we've got another report, Haywood County Sheriff's Office Statistical Report for 2017. Sheriff Greg Christopher is with us this morning. morning. Hey, good morning, Mr. Chairman and uh, commissioners. Uh, real briefly, I just wanted to uh, talk about the uh, the state of the sheriff's office uh, as far as our statistical information from 2017 is concerned. I'll be real quick and just run through some of the highlights. Uh, this past year, we uh, generated revenue in excess of $110,000 just from our pistol purchase permits and our concealed carry permits. Uh, a lot of activity there and it continues to uh, increase and, and has every year since I've been sheriff uh, in five, the last five years. Uh, we also charge for fingerprints if you are out of county resident. If you are a resident in our county and you need fingerprints, you can come by and get fingerprints uh, free of charge. That's the only other monies that is in that uh, particular revenue line item that we give back to the county each year. Uh, in our patrol division this past year, our calls for sheriff uh, for the sheriff's office just just phone calls alone. Uh, which generated some kind of response on behalf of our office was 27,400 different uh, calls that uh, our sheriff's deputies uh, actually responded to. Our communication center, uh, which is led by Shanda Morgan, who is here with, with me today, uh, continues to be uh, uh, one of the busiest sections in, in, in our office. Uh, she is doing a great job as, as she leads that uh, department, but uh, we also are very, very busy. We appreciate the fact that the uh, commissioners uh, blessed us with helping us with that $2.7 million grant a couple of years ago, which uh, is serving the, the citizens of our county very, very well. And uh, I, I'm uh, very pleased that the, our dispatch center is there at the sheriff's office and very, very close to uh, the EMS base as well and emergency management so we can all get in there and respond if we, if we need to uh, a whole lot quicker, at least from a command staff perspective. Our Unified Narcotics Investigative Team, which is a combination of our office, Waynesville Police Department, Maggie Valley, uh, and uh, Canton again uh, very, very soon. Uh, along with the SBI, continues to uh, be a very, very active uh, group. Just since uh, I became sheriff five years ago, our, our drug arrest, just the sheriff's office side, has gone up 157 uh, percent. Our, our employees are doing uh, a very, very good job. Obviously, uh, hey, it's something that we have to stay after every day. There is, uh, there's always uh, 24 hours a day, something that we have to deal with uh, because of uh, our, our drug issues and our drug epidemic that we have, not only in Haywood County and unfortunately not only in just Western North Carolina, but all around the United States. Um, you know, for, for uh, one of the things that y'all have heard me talk about before our opiate, uh, from a prescription side of the house, for every man, woman, and child that lives in this county, they were prescribed a average of 94 pills per person, over 60,000 uh, people in our county. Uh, that is a lot of pills that uh, were prescribed. I think that equates to about 5.6 million opioid pills that was prescribed to people in this county uh, last year. So it's uh, along with uh, people being able to buy heroin a whole lot cheaper than they can buy prescription pills now. So it's, it's a battle that, uh, that, that we always uh, face and something that we, we fight every day. Uh, our detention center uh, is doing very well. Uh, our inmate count has actually come down. 
Uh, one of the things that I'm glad to report is our jail annex still continues to be closed. Uh, I, I attribute most of that to uh, the Pathway Center and to other uh, jail ministries that we have. Uh, of course, well, we're, uh, we do a lot with jail ministry and we have trained over 600 people uh, from a safety aspect to come into our facility and uh, do jail ministry. And between the churches in our county, which I'm very, very thankful for, along with the Pathway Center, along with other agencies that continue to help us from a rehabilitative side, uh, our, our numbers are starting to uh, continue to come down. Uh, this past year, we uh, made a, uh, a, I guess we'll call it a revenue generator uh, with our uh, detention center with uh, inmate phone service commissary of uh, two, about $270,000, which we gave back to the county as well. Um, our involuntary commitments, which is part of what our patrol uh, unit does, along with our jail staff, continues to increase. Uh, this past year, uh, we increased to 674 involuntary commitments that we had to put our hand to by going out and picking up uh, this person and a lot of times transporting them to far reaches of our state. We don't have anywhere close to take involuntary commitments now. Most of the uh, beds are on the East Coast. One of the things that we have to deal with is if we take somebody on an involuntary commitment to the coast, whenever that they are uh, released, then we have to go back and pick them up and take them back to their home. That is something that a lot of people doesn't realize that, and one of our responsibilities uh, that we have to provide for the residents of our county from the sheriff's office. Very, so if we, uh, if we uh, had 600 people transported, then that means we've got to take 600 people back home. So uh, that counts for a, a lot of our time. Uh, we continue to be out in the community uh, doing things that we need to do with uh, lots and lots of different kind of education. We're in every middle school, we're in our high schools with our drugs and our meds program, partnering with that. We're having community forums in each of our fire districts. Uh, we normally do that uh, uh, at least one time a month. We, uh, we are working really, really hard with our community watch programs and we're encouraging community watch. One of the things that we just started is Citizens on Patrol. I'm going to come back and talk to you about that just a little bit more as this program uh, is elevated. We still do in our Refuse to Be a Victims classes and our House of Worship training with our churches. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things that uh, we are working on uh, with our school system, of course, is continued school safety. That is something that uh, that is in the front of everybody's mind and we understand that and uh, we are working with our school system. We have another meeting next Tuesday uh, to, uh, to discuss some more of uh, the safety issues that we need to address in our county as far as our school safety. That really, uh, really quickly concludes what I wanted to get out and um, I also want to say thank you very much for your support and for the support of the men and women at work at the Sheriff's Office and our detention center. I appreciate that very, very much. Do you have any questions? Commissioners? It appears that uh, y'all are working very hard and uh, I appreciate what you all do. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have any questions either, but I, I, I know what I really appreciate that you are doing is being involved in the community and how the Sheriff's Department, the deputies, and uh, are involved in the community and, and also involved in, you know, keeping those folks back uh, from coming back to jail. Yes. Uh, and, and I've been in, involved of, um, in the legal field a long time, and, and, and basically you see some of the same people coming into court, and if you can do something about that, uh, the, the return of the same, the same people coming back over and over again for the same type crimes, then, then you can stop a lot of that. And, I, and, you know, we used to have that annex, there was all, it was always open. It was always open. It sure was. Uh, and, we, uh, we've been very, very blessed to, to be able to keep it closed 
and what that does is uh, that helps that helps with our power bills or our, our uh, with all the utilities that are concerned when it comes to heating a facility that size. Plus, because it's a in a completely different location, we have to we have to take food back and forth, which really you take food back and forth three times a day, and you have to do it just uh, on the outside. So you end up having to actually roll food to another location. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's really a time consuming and a lot of man hours and manpower that has to be used for that stuff. So as long as we can keep that close, hey, we're, we're doing very well there. I just remember about five years ago, you came to us, we, think, we thought we, we were gonna have to, the annex was full, jail was full, we were gonna have to add another pod on. And uh, I, I appreciate the sheriff and and the churches uh, in the faith-based programs because they work and that's saving taxpayers money because we don't have to build that pod. The longer we put that off building the pod, the less it's, it's costing taxpayers along with what you just said. So, uh, but I, I wanna thank you and the churches especially for the work that, you, that they do because it, it works and it changes people's lives and they're able to stay out of jail <laughs> and be productive in their society. And that's what we want. So I appreciate all you do. And I know it's your leadership, Sheriff, that's done that, and we appreciate it. No, th thank you, Mr. Ansel. You're exactly right. With the support of the community that we have, the faith-based community, and, uh, and a lot of these drug and alcohol rehabilitation programs as well that are now coming into our jail that we have introduced that we welcome to come in because we understand these people are not going to get better until that they get help. And this stuff is a disease, and it has to be treated as a disease, and we have to put our hand to that and to try to help these people. And our community and our county has been very, very responsive. And it has saved it, they're untold millions of dollars, because you're exactly right. I was uh, just right at the verge of having to come and ask for uh, maybe an architect to come and start looking at uh, building extensions onto our pods. So been very, very helpful to have that. I appreciate y'all's support because uh, th this would not happen without that. Sheriff, we appreciate you going around or, or being available for our churches to make them safer. Uh, I know our church has got, gotten involved, so we're going to have to spend a little money, but uh, the short end, but the long end is we're going to have better safety in our churches. I, I think the awareness that anything can happen to us anywhere. So we appreciate that, to getting around to the churches and talking with uh, whatever group, trustees, whatever is available. Well, if we can be proactive and not reactive, and if we can help these churches and, and other organizations uh, put into place the safety plans that they need, then uh, all that does, is just, that just helps us all in this community and in this county. So thank you. Sheriff, I think also, uh, you probably hadn't said it, but I know he spends a lot of time in our jails talking to our folks there, I think on Sunday morning some. So if you don't mind to speak to that just a little bit. Well, uh, it's, uh, we, we, we go in and uh, I actually help lead that program, especially on Sunday morning, to, uh, to try to help our inmates, both male and female, to understand that there is something else out here that they need to be doing that they can get out of that orange jumpsuit that there wasn't destined to uh, to be wearing an orange jumpsuit that it's time for them to be productive and be part of our community and I have uh, lots of churches sometimes as many as 30 churches will come in at one time or representatives from those churches that come in to help us just on Sunday mornings but uh, uh, our our ministry is uh, is to help people up there seven days a week, 24 hours a day, to help them uh, because, hey, I, I, I see the need. That's for sure. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. your you. report and what you do. Yes, Next is discussion adjustment to agenda. Do we have any adjustment? Any discussion? All right, if not, we'll move to the consent agenda. First item of consent agenda was request approval of February 19th, 2018 special and regular meeting minutes. 
Anyone have any changes, corrections to those minutes? All right, if not, uh, we've got a few budget amendments. Request approval of budget amendments. Julie Davis is going to come forward. We've got one from General Fund, Health and Human Services Agency, Public Health 9407. Julie, I'll let you explain that. Good morning. Good morning. The first uh, budget amendment I have, the one for $9,407, is actually money from the Division of Public Health, and it's to assist in completing the certified electronic health record system in the health department. Okay, commissioners, have any questions about that? All right, next we'll move to the sheriff's office. The next one is a $3,000 request. You remember that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we brought a request to you to use some of the drug funds to help purchase a couple of canines. And there is a um, additional expenses in order to do something a little bit different with these canines. So we're requesting an extra $3,000. And I believe the sheriff is still here <laughs> to um, explain why we're coming back to you with this little bit additional request. So I'll let him explain that for you. What we did is we got a price on dogs that are what they call dual purpose, and that is to detect drugs and contraband and also do tracking. That was not really what we wanted, but we knew that we could at least find those kind of dogs. But once we got down to Florida, we actually found dogs that are considered to be patrol dogs now, and it's dogs that we can actually use to work with our SRT team as well as uh, the apprehension part of uh, having someone uh, that, uh, that we need to find. And so those dogs were $1,000 more. And so what we did is we, we asked if we could just spend an extra $1,000 per dog, plus it's $500 more for each of the dogs to be trained. So it ends up being a total of $3,000. But there again, I want to emphasize this is uh, not from our taxpayers' money. This comes from uh, actually drug dealers' money, and the bad guys' money, so to speak, when it comes to uh, uh, taking, ta taking their money. Now we get to spend their money in order to, uh, to help further our program to be able to apprehend more people. Uh, that uh, are, are doing this uh, illegal stuff. Kind of working against themselves. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Commissioner, do you have any questions about that? All right. Thank uh, you. This is just for curi curiosity, but uh, it says European, European imported police service dogs. Are they generally uh, the shepherds, German shepherds? Or are they they're, they're both Belgian Malinois. Okay. Uh, so they, they come from uh, over in Europe. Uh, yeah. A little different look. They're, they're a little right. bit different look. They're a little smaller dog than the mm -hmm. German Shepherd. They don't shed as bad. Mm -hmm. uh, they can uh, get it in and out of a patrol car a little bit easier, and they don't have some of the uh, sickness and the health problems that a German Shepherd sometimes has with their hips and their shoulders. Yeah. They're it's just a little bit lighter dog. Interesting. Yeah. So, yes, okay. sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, next, we have special revenue fund, E911 funds. Yes, the next two budget amendments are related. The, they're, they both have to do with emergency 911. They're, um, the first one is the special revenue fund. This is our fund that has revenue coming into it from the North Carolina 911 fund. And there are certain restrictions on how we can spend those funds. The, this particular expense, $6,965, is for computer-aided dispatch software licenses to be used in our 911 system. And these are funds that are allowed under the 911 board um, allowable expenses. And the next one, I'm going to, I think Shanda is going to come down and talk about this a little bit, explain to you what these radios do, because the next budget amendment is actually going to be in the general fund. 
It's for radios that the North Carolina 911 fund does not allow us to use those funds for. So we're, we're purchasing these, and Shanda's going to explain the, the program, and they're going to be um, reimbursed to us. The money is going to be reimbursed to us from the towns that are actually receiving the radios, so um, the software licenses. So Shanda will explain that. Sure. Basically, it's software license for the patrol cars, the ambulance, the fire trucks for their laptops that's tied into our 911 system so they can see the calls, they can run tags, any alerts on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the system, they can see that in their patrol cars for safety. So the 911 funds will pay for the portion that's tied into the CAD system at 911 and then the other portion of it is, has to be paid from the towns or the county general fund. And so the towns are ready to move on with the eight license. Canton Police, or I'm sorry, Waynesville Police Department, Maggie Valley Police Department, and Clyde Police Department. <coughs> Excuse me. They're ready to move on with that purchase. And they'll be um, reimbursed, we'll invoice them, assuming. We'll invoice those towns, they'll reimburse for that non-allowable expense. So do, the, these additional licenses are just for the towns then? Correct. No, okay. We currently have 50 on the system that's shared throughout the county between all sheriff's office, all PDs, EMS, and fire departments. Okay. So there can be 50 on the system at one time, and we've just outgrew that. 100% of that will be reimbursed, is that right? I hear you right, Julie. The one that's not allowable, the that's coming from the general fund, the 6,000? 6, 6,088. Correct. That yeah. will be reimbursed from okay. the towns. Okay. Commissioners, have any other questions? Only other thing I'd like to say, Shannon, we appreciate what you do, too. I know she does a, a whole lot with, with very little, and we appreciate what you do. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. Uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented unless there's any questions. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes unanimously. All right, next we'll move to uh, old business. Uh, only item of old business is request approval of a resolution appointing a special board of equalization and review to include the appointment of the chairman and vice chairman. And at the last meeting, we uh, appointed all of the members or voted on all the members of the Board of Equalization Review. And today, we have uh, the appointment of chairman and vice chairman, uh, Judy Hickman. Good morning. Um, yes, at the February 19th meeting, you had appointed the five members and one alternate to serve on the 2018 Board of Equalization and Review. Um, today, I'm just requesting that um, you appoint a chairman and a vice chairman to serve on that board. Okay. Commissioners, any thoughts on, on that? The, uh, I guess... I mean, I don't mind making yeah. thoughts of that, but I'd like to give you guys opportunity the, first before I his, don't uh, steal the podium. My, my thoughts would be, would be Cliff Stovall's chair and Evelyn well, that, Cooper's vice chair, but that's my thought. Yeah, hey, I mean, Evelyn's been, Miss Cooper's been the chair for several times, and then Mr. Stovall's been the vice chair. And for practical purposes, maybe flip it a little bit, and, yeah. you know, to change courses. I mean, right. I know Evelyn's done a tremendous job. And uh, she's there in case uh, Mr. Stovall can't chair it and uh, vice versa. And it gives us little options there in the future, I think. What say you, you guys about that? Cliff, yeah, I mean, chair. just looking, looking at all five of them, I mean, they've all, uh, we interviewed them and just knowing what I know about them in the past year, all of them seem to have a heart for what they're doing and seem sincere and uh, we appreciate what they're doing. But I would agree with Mike, you know, Mr. Stovall is the chair and, Mrs. Cooper's device. So. And I, I too agree. Okay. All right. Sounds like um, we're, we're in agreement on that, that uh, Rayburn Cliff Stovall will be the chair and Evelyn Cooper the vice chair. Is 
Is that it? Do we um, need to make a resolution to that effect? Uh, a resolution or just make a motion? Yes, I'll have to have the resolution approved. Okay, now let's see. I'll entertain a motion that uh, Cliff Stovall be the chair of the Board of Equalization and Review and Evelyn Cooper the vice chair. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Those opposed? I guess you could say. Now, therefore, here it is resolved that uh, upon motion and seconded by the Haywood County Board of Commissioners that Cliff Stovall uh, is now the chair of the Board of Equalization and Review and Evelyn Cooper is the vice chair. Is that good enough? Oh, you got something? Are y'all actually approving the resolution? I think that's what, the way it's been designed, that you just, somebody yeah. makes a motion to approve the resolution and seconds it. And that includes the appointments. Yeah, yeah and it's got the place down there where we fill in the blanks. So we just filled in the blanks. So we're, now we're approving the resolution. Yes. Okay, do, do, do you guys want me to read the resolution then, the entire resolution? Just so, read it okay, so we've got a resolution in front of us uh, indicating the members of the board, the chairman and the vice chairman we just approved, um, the alternate Marion Inlow, uh, the per day pay for the chairman, uh, as well as the per day pay for each of the board members and that the um, assessor will start taking applications for the appeal of real property beginning Monday, March 26th through Friday, April 6th. And you will, the board, uh, special board of equalization review will start hearing appeals on April 6th, 2018. Entertain a motion to approve the resolution as attached uh, we don't have any, it's not an exhibit, but just the resolution that is attached to our, um, attachment seven, attachment seven. And then item three would be inserting Cliff Stovall as chair and, and Evelyn Cooper as vice chair. Yeah. I, I would make that motion for, to approve the resolution. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Judy. All right. Next, we've got new business. Request approval of reappointments of Don Smart, Vance Muse, Torpy Skinner, Hugh Russell, and Bill Holbrook, and initial appointments of Josh Sarles and Karen Hammett to the Agriculture Advisory Board. We have Ryan Manning with us this morning, Farmland Preservation. Morning. Good morning. Uh, so basically, as you just read, uh, just trying to get the Agricultural Advisory Board back up. Um, so those reappointments um, have uh, technically served more than two terms, so it needs uh, approval just because we, the Haywood Soil and Water Board, feels that it would be detrimental to the functioning of the board if they were uh, disallowed. And then uh, new appointments of Mrs. Hammett and... Um, Mr. Soros. Okay, commissioners, have any questions? It's, you know, I just noticed in here that you we're re reappointing them for an. I mean, they've already served two terms, and we're. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there any issue? I mean, that says that we can't do that, or? You said if it's, if it's detrimental, we can reappoint. Okay, them, and that's what. The, yeah. All right. They sent a letter saying this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't. I just. I mean, I'm fine with it. I just curious. You know, if it come back. Ryan, were these all the applicants that we had? Pretty much. <laughs> okay. So that's why it's detrimental. If we don't reappoint them, we don't have a board. Uh, there you go. Also, um, those five are, uh, you know, they have good standing in the agricultural community so, yes. and a lot of experience. So they're uh, hopefully, you know, our, 
average age of the farmer is getting up there, so it's kind of hard to find younger people, but um, hopefully as we need to, we can. Okay. Commissioners, have any questions? If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion that Don Smart, Vance Muse, Torpy Skinner, Hugh Russell, and Bill Holbrook uh, be reappointed, and Josh Charles and Karen Hammett be appointed to the Agriculture Advisory Board. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and that passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you, Ryan. Next, we got a request to approve a reappointment of Paul Turner, Jr., Kim Ferguson, and Dave McCracken to the Haywood County Health and Human Services Board. Patrick Johnson, our Interim Health and Human Services Agency Director and Public Health Director, is with us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, all three of the uh, folks that you just mentioned are current members of our board whose term have ended. Um, they are eligible for a second four-year term. The candidates were reviewed and supported by the uh, Health and Human Service Board. A nominations committee on February 6th. They were reviewed and supported by the full Health and Human Service Board on February 20th. Uh, we respectfully request approval by the Board of County Commissioners for the re reappointment of uh, these three folks. Paul Turner, who is a public member and the current board chair, Dr. David McCracken, the veterinarian board member, and Kimberly Ferguson, who is our pharmacy board member. Okay. Commissioners, have any questions? Just one thing to add, Mr. Chairman, is uh, I am the commissioner on this board, and as, uh, as uh, Patrick mentioned, the uh, full board did give their approval for these three. And uh, I know with working with these three, uh, this is a real good board. You know, when you can go in as a commissioner and sit on the board and not have to do a whole lot, that's a good thing. So. Uh, I'd highly recommend these three as well. So. Okay. All right. Then I will entertain a motion that uh, we reappoint Paul Turner, Kim Ferguson, and David McCracken to the Haywood County Health and Human Services Board per request of that board. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Next is request approval to purchase a new truck for animal services from Ken Wilson Ford in the amount of $26,315 to be paid from the 2017-18 budgeted funds. We have Doyle Teague, our animal services director. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, morning. Pretty straightforward. We're just replacing a 2004 truck. Uh, that was, this was budgeted in last year's budget. Uh, this is, Ken Wilson provided the lowest quote by $10, and then the salesman let me know that Ford has a discount for a towing package. It's usually $595, but the discount's $500, so we can get a towing package for $95. So I went ahead and uh, included that in this request. So. All right. Commissioners, have any questions? Well, I think I seen in here somewhere when I was looking over this. You got, did you get three quotes? Yeah, Is that three right? quotes. Uh, Ford, or Ken Wilson Ford, Taylor Ford, and Asheville Ford. Right. <clears throat> I seen that. I just thought it was important for the public to know as well that there were three quotes and mm -hmm. that Ken Wilson come in as the lowest bidder. They came in as the lowest bidder by $10. <laughs> oh, that's competitive. Yeah. <laughs> All cutting it close. Huh? Did that include the towing package or not? It didn't, no. But that was a standard Ford discount across the board. So. Okay. All right. Commissioners, you have any questions? The vehicle we're replacing, Doyle, do you mind just uh, tell us a little bit about it and why we're having to replace it? It is a uh, 2004 uh, uh, F-150. It is just become unreliable in the last few years at getting up near uh, uh, 200,000 miles on it. So we, we try to keep them as long as we can, and I try to wait as late in the year to replace them as possible so they stay anywhere longer. But, but this was a, it's been needed for a while. So we have a lot of battery issues out of it. If we don't uh, run it for two or three days, we have to always jump it off. So it's, it's time. Any questions? 
All right. If not, I'll entertain a uh, motion that we approve the purchase of the new truck for animal services for 26315 from Ken Wilson Ford as presented by Dual Teak. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Doyle. Uh, next is a request approval to purchase inbound scales for the Haywood County Material Recovery Facility in the amount of $75,567 to be paid from contingency in the Solid Waste Management Special Revenue Fund. An approval of resolution declaring the old scales surplus to be advertised and sold on gov deals. We have Randy Sisk, our solid waste environmental coordinator, and David Francis, program administrator. Randy. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I'm, uh, two, I'm here to request approval for uh, a new set of scales for the inbound side at the material recovery facility. Uh, the scales that we currently have are nearing or, or at the end of their uh, functional life. They were purchased in 1990. The manufacturing plate on it is 1986. Uh, from what I've been told, uh, they were actually initially supposed to be temporary scales. So we've got a lot of life out of those scales. <coughs> um, this last December, we had a uh, biannual um, inspection. They come out, inspect, calibrate. Um, on, the, uh, on the inspection report, it stated the scale needs major repair or replaced. And these scales have been discussed uh, in the past couple of years about replacing the scales, and, and we knew it was time. So when I reached out to a couple of the uh, regional scale providers, um, the, the first place I contacted with was Brasswell out of Asheville. Those are the um, that's the company that comes over and provides our calibration services. And they actually had a quote on file. They met me on site and we discussed what they had. And I contacted a couple of other places, J.A. King and uh, another company out of uh, uh, Knoxville. Um, that company was less responsive. J.A. King and Brasswell both met me several times on site and we discussed the, the process and, and what to be expected. Um, the Brasswell scales, <coughs> they, uh, they're more of a, a concrete pad and steel pad. And uh, when they initially came out, the, the scales that they had a, a quote for, they were raised and it was open-sided. So I asked them to go back and, and uh, add side rails so we wouldn't have anybody drive off the side of the, the scales. Um, then we discussed uh, changing the angle of the exit on those inbound scale scales. I'm sure everyone's been down there. As, it, as you pull in now, you, you have to pa pull past the end of the scales and turn right to go around uh, the drive. It's not very intuitive. Uh, we've, we've seen problems in the past with trucks and personal vehicles. People start to pull out and they forget that they have to go past the end of the scale and they'll turn into the, the end of the scales, cause damage to their vehicles, cause damage to uh, the barrier that is there. So I asked them to look at changing the angle, basically shifting the exit side about eight feet, ten feet over to the right. So um, they did. Uh, the new scales that we're looking at, industry standard, 70 feet long uh, versus what we have now, 60 feet long, and uh, 11 feet wide versus 10 feet wide, what we have now. Uh, so that will also help us with some of the longer trucks that come in when they pull up on the scales. Sometimes we have to have them pull up onto the exit side in the opposite direction to get their weights. Um, so with that said, they, they, uh, they looked at it, came in, and proposed um, both as is and with the exit uh, at 8 to 10 feet to the right. And uh, the cost difference wasn't very much. It was about, I believe, six to $7,000 on the difference between the two. Um, 
one of the big difference between the two bids that were or proposals that we're looking at is a little bit of a design difference. The J.A. King would be using a lot more concrete, and that would, um, the way they design and, and uh, build these scales, that would re require about six weeks of construction from start to finish. And the Braswell scales, uh, as long as the weather cooperates, we're probably looking at less than two weeks. And during that time, we'll have to use the exit side scales for um, inbound and outbound traffic. You guys have any questions? Fishers? Uh, I think another important note there, Mr. Sisk, is also the biennial cost with Braswell's quite a bit less too. Uh, yes, sir. Um, to have it inspected, uh, that was one of the things. J.A. King, um, for their warranty purposes, they uh, require that their services be utilized for calibration uh, and inspection, and that was uh, quite a bit more. Biannual cost, $3,000, whereas the Braswell biannual cost is $528. Something else uh, just to bring up, I know that and speaking with Chris and, and what you mentioned earlier, the scales that we have now, when we bought them, they were used. Yes, sir. You know, you mentioned the date on the tag, but I just want to be sure the public knows that as well. Uh, and, and not only that, from what I understand, just the ongoing cost of keeping these old scales up is quite costly, on, you know, on a yearly basis. So it's one of them things that we talk about from time to time, you know, pay me now or pay me later. So, Yes, sir. This is just the inbound scales we're replacing? Yes, sir. The outbound scales, how old are they? I don't have that information off the top okay. of my head. But they're still functioning okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah the outbound scales are functioning well. Mm -hmm. They don't have the load coming in on them usually, huh? Sir? They don't have as much weight on them coming in. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, they're <laughs> empty when they go out. Usually yeah, they're that's empty. true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the new scales, I will say, they they are digital, a little bit of different technology. They have mm -hmm. these hydraulic cylinders placed all around, and then the pressure is read digitally. Current scales that we have now, they're spring uh, loaded, and there's a maintenance issue there because the way they're designed and, and in place can't get underneath the scales for access for um, any repairs or clean out. The new ones should have that. I noticed the old scales you're going to put on Gavi deals and try to sell those. That's my understanding. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions about this? I understand yeah. it right as well that the old scales, we're going to put them on the surplus to be advertised. Is that right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Morning, commissioners. The uh, said the old scales will be removed, and the we're going to set those scales to the side. Um, we don't feel like they can be used as scales again, from what we've learned from the vendor. So it'll be more or less sold as scrap. Uh, so before you also, as you have a, a resolution declaring the, uh, the scales as surplus that will be uh, um, uh, advertised on Gov deals. Yeah. So hopefully uh, we can find a vendor. We're going to, uh, if this is approved today, we're going to try to get that up to Gov deals today, where we can. Uh, what? It's going to be scrap, or it's going to be sold on Gov deals. It's going to be sold. Scrap. Yeah, we yeah, for scrap. It's more. Like, they think it'll be more or less of a metal sale than it would be you know, reselling it as scales. Okay. This, mean, you know, remember, these scales are in two, these scales are in two different pieces. They're in 30 foot sections as opposed to one long section. So yeah, so it, it's more or less that I don't think that can that can be repaired again to be scales. Uh, back in 2015, uh, we did a major upgrade and uh, tried to repair the scales. Then uh, there was an accident out there uh, shortly after that, so it kind of the, uh, everything uh, went away after we repaired them. And it's just this, this constant cost to keep repairing and repairing. They said they've, they've reached the uh, you know their useful life at this point. 
And one of the uh, things I want to make sure that you understand as well, too, when uh, in January of 2015, we signed, you know, uh, for uh, consolidated waste services, you know, to become the service provider down there as well. The, this is one of the expenses that is not covered in that contract. Anything that's infrastructure, there's going to remain, whether it was CWS or an ABC company or the county, though, those uh, costs, you know, if it was a roof or a, a building uh, replacement, those costs are still borne by the county. Um, as you mentioned uh, earlier, Mr. Uh, Rogers, the cost of the inspection, uh, CWS does pay for the cost of the inspection of the scales uh, uh, biannually as well. But the infrastructure costs still remain part of the counties. And that's why the county, uh, we're paying for this, uh, for the scales, because they will remain there regardless of whoever's operating the, the, the uh, MRF. This, this uh, funding for these scales are in the solid waste budget. Yes, we, we have a contingency that um, that we have not used uh, this year at all. Um, we still have uh, you know several months to go uh, in the uh, year, and so I was a little, little bit afraid to start moving some money around until uh, we got closer to the end of the year. So I'd, I'd prefer to take it out of contingency instead of uh, doing a line item transfer at this point. Okay. Hey, any other questions, Commissioners? All right, if not, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the purchase of inbound scales uh, for the Haywood County Material Recovery Facility in the amount of seventy-five thousand five sixty-seven. Who is the company we're purchasing those from? Braswell. 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 And uh, further, to declare sur surplus the old scales to be sold on gov deals. Anybody want to make that motion? I'll move. Second. Any Second. discussion? Just, I, I want to just comment in the budget. We have 491000 in the budget, and this is taking the amount 76000 out. So there's still 415000 in the budget, mm -hmm. which you said we hadn't touched much this year. We haven't we've not, touched, we've not touched contingency at all. So Correct. there's quite a bit of money in the yeah. contingency. So this is very much within budget. Yeah. And this, be mindful, too, that the solid waste uh, uh, budget is separate to, right. due to a special revenue fund. It's separate than from the general fund. So it oper operates uh, outside of that. Just, uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Any, any further discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next, uh, we have the budget amendment to uh, the Solid Waste Management Special Revenue Fund of 75567. Julie? Well, I think everything has already been discussed. And as far as the uh, contingency, the 491,150, that's where this money is coming from. And um, like David said, it is the special revenue fund. It's not the general fund. All right. Commissioners, any questions of Julie? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the budget amendment to allow the 75,567 the cost to replace the inbound scales to come out of the Solid Waste Management Special Revenue Fund. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. And that passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next is request approval to purchase laptops for the Sheriff's Office in the amount of $63,790 to be paid from Information Technology 2017-18 budgeted funds. We have Lori Tomlin, our Information Technology Director, here to explain that. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm here to request your approval to purchase 27 additional notebooks, <clears throat> excuse me, laptops for the Sheriff's Office. Um, this is part two. Last year we bought 27. This year we're going to complete with another 27, and that will be the total technical refresh for all the laptops at the sheriff's office. Um, the funds are budgeted in my uh, fiscal year 17-18 budget, um, and this should again complete the refresh, and it will be a total of 54 laptops that we're putting in service for the sheriff's department, and we're taking out of service um, gear that is probably over seven years old um, and this will also include some mounts for their vehicles and some accessories like docking stations for when they go into the office and they can dock their um, laptops from when they leave the patrol car so um, there will be 27 in, in all that will be purchased commissioners have any questions of Lori regarding you say the current ones they have now seven years old, is that right? Yes, sir. They are. 
the ones that, that are being taken out, uh, what are they, will they be like surplus, or will they be able to be used for something else, or be refurbished, or? Um, no, sir. The, they are really. Um, we have almost taped these things together to keep them um, okay. operating. When we take them out of service, we will remove the hard drives, have them shredded. Um, we'd like to try to piece them together to make another a piece of equipment, but it really is futile. So yeah. um, it's best to just discard them. And we, um, like I said, we strip them down and just keep the shell and they usually go to the uh, solid waste mm -hmm. once we've removed all the memory and the hard drives. Most of the time, to uh, get those to where they could be usable again, it costs just as much to purchase a new one. Yes, from what I understand. So, I was just saying, I was telling Kirk, it, seven years is a long time in computers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they've, they've been used very, very highly. <laughs> well, they do. They use those things, you know, day in and day out, all the time. They so, do. Yeah, Twenty-four-seven. Yeah. And we're replacing them with rugged laptops. The ones that they currently have are more of a business laptop that really aren't designed for the, the in and out of vehicles and the mobility that they need. So the ones we are putting in place are, are rugged and designed to last longer. And the ones that we have had in service, it's um, been quite um, a miracle that they've worked as long as they have. So um, they've taken really good care of them considering, but they do need a more rugged device for their operations. Okay, any other questions? Oh, and again, just uh, for informational purposes, this money was budgeted in this uh, budget year for this particular purchase, and yes, we're just completing the uh, contract. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion regarding the motion? Motion to purchase the laptops for the sheriff's office for 63790. If not, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, and that passes unanimously. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is call for a work session on March 19th at two, 2018. That's in uh, two weeks in the training room and health and Human Services Agency building at 2 o'clock to discuss the 2018-19 budget. And that is uh, the meeting that we have with the uh, community college and the schools? Yes. Okay. So that will be at 2 o'clock on March 19th at the Health and Human Services building. And we're going to make that, make that to, to where we can sit around at a table, too, and discuss. Yes, we've it. talked about that. Yes, okay. we will. All right. Any questions about that, commissioners? Okay, and then that is scheduled. Anything else for open session? If not, uh, we're moving, in, moving into closed session. Um, pursuant to uh, North Carolina General Statute 143, 318.11A1 for closed session minutes. And also 143, 318.11A3, attorney client privilege. Uh, entertain that motion. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And we are going to move to closed session as soon as we get back to the room. Okay, we are back after closed session. Uh, we do have one item of business after closed session, and that is to approve uh, the closed session minutes. Uh, and so I will go through those as follows. I will entertain a motion to approve and release the closed session minutes. Um, from November 6, 2017, regarding the discussion of other closed session minutes under North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A1, and also the closed session minutes regarding attorney client privilege under 143.318.11A3 of December 4, 2017. I hear a motion on those. So move. All right. Uh, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay. So the, the following minutes are, uh, are under a motion to approve but not release and review at a later date the attorney-client privilege uh, minutes of one, under 143.318.11A3 from December 4th, 2017 and February 19th, 2018. I'll entertain that motion. So moved. Any discussion? 
All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And then uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve but not release the closed session minutes regarding personnel 143318.11A6 from December 18th, 2017, January 2nd, 2018, and then three sets from January 16th, 2018. Uh, minutes regarding attorney client privilege 143318.11A3 from December 18th, 2017. February 19th, 2018. And then for economic development, 143.318.11A4 from January 16th, 2018. I'll entertain that motion. So move. Any discussion regarding that motion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, and that passes unanimously. Okay. Um, any commissioner have anything else? before we close up today. Just one comment. The Haywood County School Foundation uh, had a little get together and raised over $97,000. The Haywood County School that, Foundation, Mardi Gras. That's and the record now. I mean, that's it, the yeah. record and we feel like get a, a, a few more thousand will go over the 100,000 yeah. mark. So it's gone up the last three or four years yeah. every year. I, uh, generally go to those and uh, it's a very good event but i had a another uh, event i had to attend uh saturday and my youngest son is engaged now so i'm getting ready to have another uh, or a daughter-in-law i've got one son-in-law but a daughter-in-law so Make that all right public. congratulations <laughs> anything else all right if not i'll entertain a motion to adjourn so, so move any discussion? All in favor? Indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. <laughs>